All right. Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth Oasis workshop. We're going to be talking today about backend development. So we're going to be going through what backend development is, uh, what APIs are, which is what we create with our backends typically. And we're going to be talking about why we use backends. And then finally, some of the technologies that we're going to be, uh, that are commonly used to make them. And at the end, over the last 30 minutes or so, we're going to be going through a tutorial where we're going to be learning about how to write a basic one using Node.js and Express, which are very popular backend frameworks for uh, creating web applications that are pretty easy to get started into. So helping us out today, we have two amazing presenters. Um, so we have Gavin Miller from Generate. He is uh, graduating in Corey 20. And we have Arun uh, Jivanatham, who's going to be graduating this spring. But I'm sure you guys can introduce yourselves much better than I. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Chris said, I'm Gavin. Uh, I'm the chief software architect at Generate. Um, I have uh, worked a lot with backends, I guess, uh, through co-op and whatnot. Um, and then a little fun fact about me is that I am a dual citizen of the United States and the United Kingdom. Cool. Uh, I'm Arun. Um, I'm in Sandbox. I'm, in a, I'm an Oasis mentor. Um, I'm graduating in uh, next spring, and a fun fact about me, um, I had seven wisdom teeth, which um, so I got super lucky. I picked them all out. <laughs> That's rough. So, um, yeah, so as I mentioned, Arun, uh, Sandbox member, one of the founders, actually, and then Gavin is from uh, Generate. So we're going to be learning a little bit more here about Generate. Um, it's our first time working together with anyone from them, so... Uh, Gavin, if you'd be able to maybe talk a little bit more about what Generate does, like, or like what your role in it and sort of what the organization is all about. Sure. Uh, so Generate is uh, Northeastern's only student-led product development club. Uh, basically what that means is that we sort of take projects from Northeastern community members who are usually students um, and create a working prototype to help develop like a business idea. Um, so we have a bunch of teams working on several different projects. I think right now we have six teams. Um, and they're all made up of engineers and designers, project leads, tech leads, um, just sort of like a whole bunch of people from all different sorts of backgrounds working to create these cool products. Um, right now for software stuff, we're working on uh, an app called Earns and an app called Lifewire. And uh, that's uh, Earns is a restaurant rewards thing. Uh, and Lifewire is sort of like a medical emergency, like call doctors in your area. Um, so we're working on some pretty cool stuff. And uh, if any, if any of that sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to apply for the next semester. Cool. Our application's opening up pretty soon for spring. Uh, I think they should be. They're not open yet. I, I don't know exactly the timeline on that, but hopefully soon. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about Generate, Gavin's the guy to go to. Um, we'll have time for questions a little bit later on about content or Generate. Um, and yeah, I guess before we get started, I think I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Chris Myers, uh, Curry. 23, 22, um, workshop coordinator for Oasis. So yeah, throwing these together. Um, and so, yeah, let's get started. We have a lot to get through. Uh, so uh, I, can, I guess I can go through this really quick. So we're gonna be talking about what a backend is, REST APIs, um, if you're not sure what that is, we're gonna be kind of demystifying that. Uh, why we use our back, why use backends instead of just doing everything the front end well, and also, how do we how do we use and make our backends? That we're um, it should take us to about one twenty five. So we're gonna there's a lot, but we're gonna um, just plow through it, and then we're gonna have a little bit of time for questions. And finally, we're going to be doing our interactive tutorial. Cool. Yeah. So I think the first thing uh, that we want to talk about is what is a backend. You you probably heard it before. Um, any company you work for, any app you use will use one. So it's important to talk about what it actually is. And what it is, is basically, it's where the magic happens. It, it contains all the logic that makes uh, your app work, uh, stuff behind the scenes. Uh, for example, uh, on the next slide, um, you, you can create and log in with an account. You can create a post, uh, searching in the app, transactions in the app, pretty much everything. Like anything that, that you know, any sort of app does, any sort of program is 
uh, web web development stuff is all back end based. Um, and it kind of integrates with the front end. The front end will usually stick to sort of showing you stuff and then sending these requests to the back end uh, that trigger stuff. So for example, if you wanted to make like a blog post, um, then you type it up and you hit a post button, the post will make a request to the back end and that sort of does everything that is necessary to show that to other people. Um, and then there is a quick question from the chat. Is the back end the controller and the front end the view? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, it's not exactly, but yes. Um, so then how, how exactly does that interaction happen? Um, it is often, but not always, done through a, something called a REST API. Um, and we're going to focus on that because that's a pretty big sort of uh, way that apps work now uh, is through a REST API, which is used to communicate. Um, so what is a REST API? Well, to talk about that first, we need to know what an API is. Uh, essentially, it's a defined way to communicate with a backend. Um, it's sort of it's a set of rules the backend that the backend uses to say this is how you speak to me, and the front end follows those rules and makes stuff happen. Um, so, what is REST? Uh, REST is it's basically just a, a certain style of defining an API. Uh, there's a bunch of principles to it. You can look them up if you're interested. The important one is that uh, data is linked to a specific URL. Uh, so if you had like an API that was dealing with a pet, you would find it at slash pet slash pet ID. And it's always gonna be there. And any sort of interaction you do with that is always at that URL. Um, a couple examples of uh, REST APIs that exist. There's the GitHub API. Um, so you could, you know, get information about repositories, users, whatever, to sort of integrate with GitHub. Uh, there's a Twitter API, uh, lets you get information about tweets and stuff, and you can do all sorts of cool things with that. Um, you could, for example, track all of the tweets that the president makes, even ones that get deleted. I know somebody who did that, um, and they did that using Twitter's API that they provide. Um, so basically, just quickly summarize a REST API. You search for something at a very specific URL, uh, and you get back some results. And that search is the request, and the results are the response. Um, and we're going to get now we're going to get a little bit more into what that actually looks like. Um, you're probably familiar with what a request kind of looks like because your browser does it all the time. Uh, you have sort of this base URL. Uh, so a couple of examples here, api.github.com or locally, localhost, colon 3000. Um, and that's, that's the URL you make a request to. Um, but that's not, that's not quite enough, right? Because that doesn't tell you exactly what you're looking for. Uh, so you have this thing called the path, which is sort of, you say, all right, I'm, I'm looking at GitHub's API. Tell me about a user. Uh, and then you specify the user you want, Northeastern Oasis. And then that gives you and making a request to that will give you all the information about Oasis's GitHub account. Um, so it's not really obvious what those paths are. And basically the way you know is either you define it and you know because you did that or somebody tells you. Um, so there's usually documentation for all sorts of APIs that kind of says, make this request here if you want this information. Um, and quick example of that for GitHub's API, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have the base URL here, but it's api.github.com slash orgs slash uh, organization like name slash repos, and that gives you all the repositories. And then, then the other new thing here is this get, um, and that's called a, a method. Um, if you could go to the next slide, uh, the method kind of tells you what you want to do for uh, that resource. So if I wanted, so in that case, it was I want to get information about those repositories. Um, the other big ones that you'll see is post uh, for adding new things, um, put for updating things, and delete for removing things. Uh, there's a few more, but they they don't often come up. Um, and then here's a quick ex quick example. So if you want to find a pet, you'd say get me a pet by its ID. Uh, if you wanted to update a pet, you'd say put pet and then obviously you need a little bit more information there and we'll get to that in a sec but there's a there's a body for the request that sort of lets you know what you're doing there uh, you delete the pet or you could upload an image uh, with a post um, 
So yeah, uh, another uh, important part of the request that we won't really interact with too much for now, but there's the headers. Um, and those are on pretty much every request that you send and they usually contain information about you know, authentication or like what sort of file type sort of like metadata about the request. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that too much for now. Um, and then as I mentioned before, uh, there's the body. Um, it's not enough for, you know, updating or creating to just kind of hit an endpoint. You need more information. Uh, so the body will contain information about what you want to update, uh, what you want to create, uh, and it's, uh, it's only available on post, put, and delete. You, there's no body with a get. Um, so now I will hand it off to Erin. Cool. So let's start talking about like why we use a backend. Um, oftentimes you can actually build an application with just a front end. You can do all the logic on the client side and you don't need to make a request anywhere. Um, there, there's also cases where the front end can communicate directly with the database and other APIs and stuff. And again, your application is self-contained with the front end, but using a backend has its advantages as well. Um, so one reason is code separation. Um, if by having the front end do too much, the, the logic of the app can get mixed up with this presentation. Uh, I don't know if you guys have taken OOD yet, but it's the, the whole concept of like, you know, separating your model from your view. Um, it's a similar thing with the front end kind of dealing with the presentation logic and the back end doing some more complicated, uh, logic. Uh, this also has some other perks such as like having multiple devs working at the same, working together at the same time, easier to like work on one component while another team works on a separate component. But um, we can continue on. And another reason is, is speed. Uh, backends oftentimes perform very expensive calculations. Uh, so whether that's a big database update um, or let's say you want to run like a complicated algorithm that's going to take two minutes, um, you send that request to the backend, it'll process it for you. And then your front end can tell you when it's done and give you the results. So the, the real benefit there is uh, you're not waiting on your personal computer to do that calculation. But even, even better is that backends are run on servers. Um, oftentimes these servers are much more powerful than what your, your personal computer would be. And they're only doing that task. So they're not as concerned with like running Chrome, running like iMessage, all the other apps you have open on your computer. So those tasks can be executed a lot more quickly and more efficiently. Um, another reason, a big one is security. Um, imagine that if the front end had access to the database, a malicious um, party could could modify some of the code to directly access a database and steal data they shouldn't have permission to. For example, um, let's say you're on the Google Drive. Uh, if the front end handled all of the uh, all of your communication, uh, a malicious attacker could could possibly view data from another user, which obviously no one wants to do. Um, so back end really allows for like user access control and allows you to set permissions per user and authenticate users so they only get access to their data. Cool, so how do we make our backend? There's a lot of different options. Uh, Spring is a Java-based um, framework. Rails is based off of Ruby. Uh, Django is Python-based. Um, .NET Core is Microsoft's that runs on C Sharp. Um, and there's also Express. So we're gonna be focusing on, focusing on Express today. Um, it's based off of Node.js, which is a JavaScript-based uh, framework. Cool. So Express lets us easily create full applications or REST APIs. So we heard from Gavin earlier what REST APIs are. Express kind of allows you to implement these REST APIs. Um, basically, what this means is that your Express backend can listen to um, incoming requests and handle them appropriately. Um, so as I mentioned before, Express runs uh, on Node.js, which is a, like a JavaScript engine. Um, it lets us execute JavaScript, uh, JavaScript code. Um, and it, you know, the, the, like I mentioned before, we're actually running this on servers oftentimes. So you're not running it on a browser. So a lot of you guys probably use Chrome. Chrome uses uh, an engine called Chromium, but we, we don't really want to launch Chrome every time you want, you want to handle a request. So Node actually lets us allow, uh, allows us to run JavaScript code um, on servers and, and just outside of your web browser. 
And a big perk is it's also very popular, which means it has a lot of support from libraries, uh, a lot of developers that have kind of figured out all the complicated stuff that, you know, all the quirks about it. And um, as you guys probably know, Stack Overflow, um, a, lot of, a lot of good Express content on there. Cool. So in summary, um, the back end is just to is to just separate um, separate code like the the back end logic that kind of communicates the database does any kind of processing on top um, with the front end presentation logic and the way we communicate is through an API. So uh, if you guys want to write fundies and stuff, you know we all often talk about like um, like design recipe and like uh, like how data like the, the data structure and stuff. Uh, so a similar thing is is what an API is. It's just like how do we want our data to flow between the front end and the back end? It's kind of like the language they communicate in. Um, and like I said, it's the, it just handles the logic of, um, of really communicating to the database. So you separate the user from being able to access the database directly. And um, in that way, it becomes a lot more secure, a lot faster, and um, just a cleaner code base to maintain.